Hey guys, this is Mike with StoneCoatCountertops.com. Today we're going to take this table, this is an old dining table we got for free, and we're going to show you how to turn it in to something that you will just love. This is so cool. We really had a good time designing and making this piece. We had, uh, we had fun. It just really came to life. We're going to show you all the tips and tricks how to do this from start to finish. You can see us at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Mike here with StoneCoatCountertops.com today. I'm with Terry from Canada. Terry, you want to inter introduce yourself? Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, I'm Terry from uh, Winnipeg, Canada, and uh, we came here about three, four days ago uh, getting some training done with Mike. Mike's awesome, guys. Uh, there ain't nothing like it, man. This product is absolutely, absolutely awesome, man. I have never seen stuff like this. I work with epoxies, and there ain't no other epoxy like this. We are going to turn this thing into magic and to gold today. Yes, yeah, this is an old table that we, we've had up here in our shop for a while. And this project, I've been chomping at the bit to get to it. And so we're going to show Terry what we can do with it. He's going to help us. We're going to make this thing come to life. And it's just an old uh, import table from China that has particle board, a thin veneer. We've, uh, you know, I sanded the veneer a long time ago in preparation to do something with it. And we've just let it sit. So today, we're going to make it come to life. But we had a leaf here. You want to grab that leaf. Yeah. This was in the middle of the table. And we don't want a table that big. If you wanted to do your table and be able to still take the leaves in and out, you would have to pull it apart and mask all of these. And you need to do a good job masking those so that you can put it back together later and, and not get epoxy on your tracks and that kind of thing. And that just requires some extra prep work. But today, we're going we're gonna to purposely glue this together so that it becomes one piece. This is the size we want. And we're going to turn this thing into something that is just gorgeous. We, we don't quite have a plan yet. But uh, that's, that's the fun part, is, is we get to kind of create a, a color palette and then go with it. We make our plan. Legs are solid, man. This is like a $10 thrift store table. Yeah. And when it's done, you guys won't believe this. I actually did a job and, and put some materials in for a, a customer, and they had a, a farmhouse table that they wanted um, in their home instead, and, and they were getting rid of this table. And I said, hey, can I have it? And they said, sure, take it. We're going to throw it out. So threw it in the trailer, and, and here we go. Now you guys get to see what we can salvage out of a piece of trash into something with class, right? Awesome, man. All right, let's so do it. <laughs> first thing we're going to do is we're going to mask off this joint. We're going to pull, let's vibrate the table apart just a little bit, OK? And we're going to mask this off so that uh, when I bondo this, we don't have a bunch of b extra bondo to sand off. And that makes it real easy. So I'm just going to take everyday <laughs> masking tape. I'll do one side. Terry's a painter. You're, you're probably a much better, much better masker than I am anyways, man. What we have here is just our all-purpose Bondo putty. We can get this right at Home Depot. Uh, I get it in gallons. You can get it in just a quart for a lot cheaper, but a gallon costs just over $20. It goes a long way. We use this for many different applications in doing this process. If you've got to repair a seam on an old Formica top before you put your stone coat counter epoxy over it, that's a really good uh, product to use. In this case, it's going to bond this together really well. So I just put an old shim in here, and I keep that shim in here, and it just helps me pull some out and put it on my project. So I'll just mix up some of this. So you're just going to add some hardener. It says 2% um, hardener by volume is what you need, but it's really just kind of an eyeball. It's just going to accelerate or uh, a little faster the more you put in. So right now our shop is sitting at 68 degrees, so you're, just, you're, you're, you're in a nice, easy temperature. It's not going to set off too fast, so we have plenty of working time. So I'm just going to put some hardener in there. And I just like to use the Bondo spreader just to spread that around. And I pull it back over itself and keep pushing it into itself. And that's a good way to mix this. You want to make sure it's fully mixed because if it's not, it's never going to, never going to harden up on you. So just mix it around real good. It's a good thing to practice on, especially when you're doing those rock face edges. If you haven't seen our video on how to do a rock face edge, this is the same product that we use to create really neat live edge look. Um, but uh, you, you get used to working with Bondo real quick. All right, so we pushed our table together a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down this seam and just force it in there. And that'll get down in there, scrape off the excess. And then when we push this together, it's going to all ooze out, and that's what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for full 
ooze out. That means it's coming out the top, and it's also going to squeeze down the bottom and just create a, a really, really good permanent bond is what I'm looking for. So, Mike, if you can't get this stuff at Home Depot, can you get it in the body shops? Yeah, great point, uh, Terry. Yeah, uh, if you can't find it at Home Depot, any auto bo body shop's going to have a similar product. You can get this on Amazon if you live in the States. We have a link right on our website to Amazon um, for where you can order this and get it shipped to your house in two days. You know, Let's go so. ahead and push this together nice and hard. Okay, let's get underneath that. You want to do the front clip? Yep. There's clips under here. We're just going to lock those cams. Cool. So I'm, I'm just going to take this now, and I like to leave it proud. I like to leave it a little high so that we, we don't see the seam later. So I'm just going to scrape it off to the level of that tape. And if you leave it a little high, you have something to sand back flush to your table. All right. Before this hardens up, let's pull that tape. Got that. And normally, guys, this takes about 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on your temperatures, for it to harden before sanding. Yep. Right? Yep, thank you. But it'll start to gel on you rather quickly, so you don't want to be working it when it's gelled, but you see how I got a little strip of it that's sitting higher than the table? Yep. That's what you're looking for, because then we could sand it and you'll never see the Get seam. Get flush look later. Mm -hmm. So what, what we're gonna do while this is drying is we're gonna mask off the rest of the table so that when we apply the first coat of Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy, it actually doesn't get on the apron of our table, it doesn't get on the legs. We're gonna uh, come back here, we're gonna use paint and primer and one on this to give us a base color, but uh, we'll mask it off first. So we'll show you on film us doing that, but we'll probably fast forward it so you don't get too bored. Here we go. <laughs> We got this table all masked off. We got some brown paper going around it. Uh, we taped right underneath the lip because the drips are gonna come down there and coagulate um, when we do our epoxy. And one thing that we do is we come back in about four hours and we'll scrape those drips off. If you haven't seen our videos on um, when we do Formica in place, you could go check that out. And it shows how we'll just use that same Bondo spreader that we used here and we'll come underneath and scrape those drips off. You could use a hard piece of plastic, an old credit card, Anything rigid like that will just get those drips right off, but you want to wait about four hours when it's still gelled. So what we're going to do now is we've, uh, we've, we've got a, a sanding disc on here, and we have our Bondo. It's dry, and we're just going to sand this to where it's flush with the table. I'm going to go ahead and grab a mask, and we'll sand that up. Okay, we're going to use our paint and primer in one. We're almost running out of this black, but we're going to do a black base on this table. Okay, we got our black base paint down here. We just used paint and primer in one, and we uh, fogged the, the edges a little bit with some black spray paint. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna accent this black, because right now we're looking at it, you can see the veneer grain, you can see that this is an old junky table, and don't let that uh, worry you, it's okay. We're gonna go over this, you will never know that this was you know, a veneered table. It'll, it'll look really neat when we're done, but first thing I'm gonna do is fog this with some bright colors just to give our base some interest because when you see through the layers of epoxy when you have something at the very bottom like a rather than just a solid base it creates more depth does that make sense Terry? Absolutely. yeah you'll see these colors come out from way down it looks like they're way down there and they're just looking right out at you yeah so i'm gonna um especially focus on the edges and then i'm gonna fog some of these on top terry i'm gonna do this half you're gonna do that half so i'll show you the three colors i'm gonna use i'm gonna use lagoon I'm going to use white, and I'm going to use almond. All right. So here we go. And you can see that lagoon to that black. It just, it almost looks like it's glowing, you know? I mean, just this color alone is just changing the look. And you see where I did that Bondo there? Yeah. And it's, it looks, all, it, no problem. Doesn't, doesn't hurt anything. So what I'll do now is I'll do these two whites, the white and the almond and then I'll overlay it again with that lagoon. Just, okay. just, and I don't want to put this spray paint on too thick because then it takes forever to dry. That's right. just, just fog it on, you know. And this is that white. and You can see how it's speckling, and that's just because this is an old can, but I like that effect. I think it looks cool. You just don't want to 
put too much, you know. So here's some of that almond, and that just contrasts the white a little bit. And, and see how we're kind of killing that lagoon, yep. and that's why I'll overlap it one more time. And I'm not really doing a, uh, a grain. I'm just kind of getting the color on there. Just randomly, wherever. Yep. We'll finish with that lagoon one more time. So that's our prominent top color. And, and this sets you up. These, these underlying colors set your top coat up where it, it uh, doesn't need a lot of work. You know, That's it right. gives you, it gives you, because even if we just put clear epoxy over this, it'll make these very vibrant coming through. All right, my friend. All right. Enjoy. I will. When you're working with spray paints, wear your mask. When we're talking on the video, we want you to be able to hear us. So that's why we're not wearing a mask right now, but uh, protect yourself, your eyes, your ears, your lungs. Another color. A little bit of white next. That's the almond. Yeah, that's, go go for it, man. Okay. It's all good. One thing we really try to stress when you're working with these products, don't be too regimented. Be okay with uh, being free and loose because if you're if you're worried about having it exactly what your mind's seeing. You're going to have a hard time, but if you're open and you let it flow and let it work, you're really going to enjoy the process. So have fun with it, guys. Yeah, that stuck pretty good. <laughs> nice job, Terry. Nice. You know what? I like, uh, add your lagoon, and I like these speckles, so I think we'll do lagoon, and then we'll just speckle a little bit okay, over the lagoon. Good, good plan. This almost looks like water, you know what I mean? On, on the top of, uh, on the top of there, like reflecting at night or something. Nice. Yeah, speckle some white over that. Character? Yeah. No, that's the almond. No. Is it? Mm-hmm. The white was special, wasn't it? That's all right. Kick here that's giving me the wrong colors. Nice. Nice, that's perfect. I like that, man. A little more over here? Yeah, yeah, please. Perfect, man. All right. So yeah, all we've done is we, we did a black base and you can see, you know, we were actually pretty short on our black paint, so we we stretched it out a little bit, but that doesn't matter. When you do all these base colors over it, it doesn't matter, it you doesn't know? Matter. And so we're gonna let this dry and we'll come back and we'll do our first color coat, which is the fun coat, and we'll uh, we'll see what this thing does for us. All right, man. All right. Okay guys, what we've done, we've zoomed the camera in. We're gonna show you this piece up close. We're going to trial on our clear epoxy and make this thing come to life. Here we go. Terry, you want to go ahead and pour that? You bet. So what we've done, we've poured a little more than what we're going to need because we're going to scrape a lot back in the bucket, but we're going to do some really great effects with that clear as we go. I'm going to give you a stick, Terry, that you can scrape that out right there on the uh, surface. Okay. Let me find one. Here you go. And is that a necessity, or a necessity to scrape this hood, Mike? Well, yeah, you want to mix it all together. So if we want to use what's in this bucket later, we'll know we have mixed it on the table. You okay. see what I mean? Okay. That's perfect. All right. You're good. So that little bit of excess, I'll just take it and I'll just kind of work with it a little bit just to make sure it's mixed. Mm-hmm. And you're doing good not putting too much pressure with those teeth down on our fresh base color. Yeah. I like that. Uh, good job. You don't want to push real hard and scrape it up. You know, use the epoxy almost as a lubricant. And then don't push any off the uh, sides yet because we're going to pull the rest into um, the bucket. So we don't want a bunch waste, wasted right now.
Terry, you want to go ahead and take some of this lagoon, and just like that base, we're going to fog some of that with to create the depth. Fog some lagoon, and we'll fog those same three colors, okay? okay? I'm going to do some over here. I'll just start with the white and follow right. behind you. You're starting to drip a little bit. I don't know if it's how you're holding it or not, but we'll just move some of those drips. Good, that's good. Let's grab two more colors. I'm gonna grab the navy. Um, you, why don't you grab that almond? Okay. And I'll go first and you follow behind me to overlay that. So there's some navy there. And we're just fogging spray paint on there. That's uh, four colors there. Good. Good on the almond? Yep. Okay, let's finish up with a little bit more lagoon to make that our top color again. And I'll actually come over with a little bit more white too. We're just overlaying color. All right, we've already chopped this, we've already spread it. Now we're gonna hit it with some alcohol. Let's, uh, I'm gonna take some gold here, really shake it up. Oh, watch what this does, watch my this, friend. Guys. Now to get, uh, you'll see it start to move some of that paint but we're gonna make it a really neat reaction here in a second. Look at how it starts to take that and separate all separate, those colors. Yeah. That's because of the alcohol, right? Yep, it's reacting with that paint. Okay. And all these things are, are in conjunction with our products, they work together. But uh, I like that, but let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna fog a little bit more spray paint over that just to give it a little bit more depth. Let's go back with that Lagoon and Navy and then we'll finish with white. There's the name. Oh yeah, look at what the, look at what it's doing now with the alcohol sitting on the surface. That's good, sweet. All right, I'm gonna spray a little bit of aluminum spray paint on top. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot of aluminum. No. Look at see how it just gives it that fog of color. Now this is still, yeah, yeah. see how that drip yeah. there? Let's just erase some of that. Wow, it almost looks like a sheet of metal. It you does, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's been heated up. Yeah. All right, let's, let's hit some, now this is what I'm gonna find the black. You wanna help me find the black spray paint? Oh, here it is. Okay, okay here we go. Where's my silver? Here it is, deep silver. So we're gonna uh, fog a little bit of black spray paint on here and we're gonna fracture it with this deep silver. Can you hold that for me? Yeah. So I'm just gonna spray some of that right here, just in some random spaces. We're gonna granify this by hitting it with some alcohol here. All right. Boy, all those are starting. Look at the web of color there. You know what I want to do? I want to finish off with that lagoon and white again. I keep going back to I that. I'm just thinking the same thing. We've got to put that lagoon and white on. All right. Here, I'll hit the lagoon this time. You're yes. going to follow up with the white. The white so if the color builds up on that tip, just wipe that so it doesn't drip. I don't know. I don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, spray a little, fog a little of that on there.
Very cool. All right, now we're going to mix up in the rest of that clear that we had. You don't want to leave this in the bucket too long, but we're going to mix up some white metallic and some white glitter, okay? So here, I'll grab that white glitter. It's right here on this. So I'm going to take some of our white stone coat countertop metallic powder. We're going to pour some of that in there. Then I want you to put some of that glitter. Good. We're, we're just going to use a paint stick to mix this up. All right. Just mix that by hand. Mixes really quick. I'm anxious to see what that white glitter and the white metallic do yeah. together. Yeah. Look at that richness already. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to pour this out randomly here. Oh, look at this. Look at what happens when you touch the color. Watch this. Let's, let's, I'm, I'm just going to make a couple spots like this okay. just to make it a little bit random. And then we'll come back and maybe torch that a little bit just yeah. to move it. Just bring those off. I'm going to do that in a few spots. And I'm just moving this with my hands. Okay. Go ahead. Have fun with it. We're going to play with this until we like it. Yeah, I like that. This is just going to create some different effects. It'll, it'll still flow really yeah, good for us. Yeah, you know? guys. Finish yours off the edge. Make it okay. go, you know, make it, make something grow there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's crazy. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to put some white in here. Here we go. this is going to be like big chunks of quartz that are stuck in there or who knows what it's going to be but we're going to play with this until we really like it I'm going to move that around and just by dragging that stick through there it's bringing some of that color in with it see that yeah. we have so much spray paint on the surface you got to be careful with it but in this case, we're going to be okay. It's, it's, this is going to turn out really cool. Boy, I like what those colors are already doing. Yeah. See where I dripped it? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that. A couple more drips there. I like the contrast. Yeah. So I'm just adding like this crystallized effect in there. I really like to do effects over the edge because it looks it looks like a solid piece at that point. Look at where, where we touched it with our fingers, how that's laying out. Oh. I love that. Yeah. Man. That looks <laughs> wild. <laughs> you see how easy this is? Yeah, it's fun, man. I'm just going to drip some of this around yeah, sure. just to make some like spots with, yeah. you know, because it's flown out so nice. Right. It just looks like little crystals and rocks in there. Yeah. Now you could, you, you, you pick up that glitter now too. Yes. See what I mean? It's not gaudy. It doesn't, it doesn't no. jump out, no, but it's going to. It's soft, but you're seeing it in there. Yes. I love like it. A deep depth course. Yep. Now we're going to move this around, see what happens. <clears throat> Golly, I love what our fingers have yeah. done here. It's like just, it's insane. Do you want to do more of that with our fingers? I'm almost thinking we should a bit. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I love how that just leaves some pockets open. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
but whatever you do, kind of fracture it, like your fracking thing on your table. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Bring it, like finish it. Yeah. And you know, down the side, you can just do little ones, you know? Yeah, yeah. Boy, I, I, I like that effect. <laughs> we have so much spray paint on there, it just kind of melds it together a little bit, and it's going to still retain. <laughs> We're finger painting, brother. Yeah, we are, buddy. Yeah, I like this, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yes. See, I'm scared to touch it here, but I, I'm doing it, man. <laughs> Just go for it. Have fun. Because <laughs> it's creating kind of a ridge here. Yeah. So I'm moving that. Oh wow. Yeah, just kind of blend those out a little bit too. You know what I mean? To where it doesn't look too man-made intentional, yeah. you know? That is wild. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm going to join this a little bit here. Join this white. Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to make yours a little bit more, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to pull it out a little bit, you know. <laughs> Crazy, brother. I love it so far. <laughs> We're going to torch it and see what happens. See, I don't like this on mine. See these dark lines? They kind of look fake. Yeah. I'll just dab it a little bit. Yeah. And this is marbling. This is what you see in, in courts and things. You get these different, different lines. Great. Okay. I'm going to torch this thing. i got to get myself a... Uh... Dude, this one rocks, man. You like it? Oh, yeah. I <laughs> do. <laughs> You're having fun, man. <laughs> See, when, when you do a home show, you really got to have pieces that stop people in their tracks. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, uh, see these drips? Yeah. I'm just moving those with my hand, getting those. You don't want to mess with the upper edge too no. much. No. It's this lower one, this, this particular lip of this table. All right. So we can always go back later on and hit him again, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, see, we're going to have a problem here because of this lip. Yes. It's going to retain drip, so we're going to have to come back and scrape those midway here. Yeah. Okay, see these? Yep. These now look a little fake to me, so yep. I'll just clean any of them that look fake to your eye. If they look real, I'd leave them alone. I like how this came out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that you're seeing those colors come through, there's so much depth that you're looking down into. Torch time. Torch time. Watch this stuff move, guys. Go ahead. What's up, Cornell? No, come on. Before you, before you put that on, you guys are laughing at me at that piece. Before you put the last coats on, it was looking exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. right, man. You, you can. Right in front of me <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Go for it, man. Move it. See, when I torch this, it's bringing up some of those colors from underneath. Yeah. Making it look real. I know, I yeah, don't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that glitter come to look at, look at what the metallic does when you torch it. See how it like moves it in a weird way? 
Look at this tiny spider webbing. Yeah. And yeah. I love where we played with it with our fingers. What's that? Yeah, no seam. You never know that we glued that together. Are you surprised all that different stuff we put in, how flat it still remains? Yeah. You gotta be careful with too much paint pigment because it'll coagulate on you if you're not careful. I'm really glad that we moved some of this with our fingers to create this depth. What's that, Cornell? Like, uh, yeah. And, and this coat isn't nearly as important to get flat as your second flood coat because our second flood coat is going to have zero color in it. It's just going to be a clear to lock all this in and protect it. And uh, man, I love that metallic mix with the glitter. I think that looks cool. Yeah. I think it gives it a, a, a certain effect that's going to be subtle, but it's going to catch the light. Now, right now, I could see that glitter creating like a little bit of surface tensions. Yeah. And that's why we're going to do a second coat. Right. See what I mean? Yeah. But this is such fine particles. You wouldn't want to use like a heavy craft glitter or something. No, we, no. I love this fine milled uh, particles, you know. And, and, I, and, and I'm glad we don't have it in the whole table. Right. I'm glad we just put it in that white. Yeah, and it's not, it's not just right here. It's kind of so soft. It's subtle, but you're still seeing it. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, go give us a like and give us a comment. Tell us what you thought of the video. You can subscribe to our, uh, our channel here and get all the up-to-date videos. We do videos almost on a weekly basis. You can go see us at stonecoatcountertops.com. We have all our products up there. You can see exactly what we used here in this video. Uh, on our training videos, they're all free, and you can learn how to do these amazing effects. Uh, that's how Terry found us. Thank you for being with us no here, problem. man. Thank you, man. We've, you got a like. Yeah, we <laughs> we have had. You got a like. Thank you, buddy. Hey we, guys, I mean, and there's 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 nothing uh, to say good about him. I mean, he's 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 seen it. You guys want to question him? You know, I'm here. I've seen it. I've done it. It's awesome. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Appreciate it. Until next time, from StokeCountertops.com, you got this. All right. Guys, uh, we are really pleased with how this piece came out. Yeah. Talk, talk about it here, uh, talk Terry. Talk about it. Hey, we were finger painting. That's what we were doing, buddy. Yeah. Uh, we kept fogging, kept fogging, put the clear on, and uh, just kept fogging. And obviously, when you have that much clear on, you, you're allowed so much fog to go over top with colors, right? Right. And I mean, and that therefore it gave us the chance to go with our fingers and just kind of mess it up. I mean, and and that when you're done, we got the spider effect. We got this with the metallics in there. It's not. It's not. Boing, looking at you, it's subtle, but you're still seeing it. Yes. I mean, and the, the working time, I mean, with other epoxies, I mean, I've worked with other epoxies again, and I just came up here four days ago, and Mike's been letting me work with him, letting me do projects, and the working time. It's like, if we use other epoxies, guys, honestly, the working time would not be there. I mean, we could probably work with this for another half an hour if we wanted to, maybe even an hour. Depends what you're working, your temperatures are. What's nice about this project, too, is... Uh, you could take a hot pot when this is all done, yeah. right off the stove, yeah. put it right on the surface. You're not going to hurt it. No. You know, it's a it's a durable, impact-resistant product 
We have so much fun designing and making it. We, uh, we had a little bit of a color palette to play with. And, and honestly, it's like opening up a Christmas present as you're building it because it just, it just comes together. Totally. And you guys saw what we started off with. It was a piece of junk. <laughs> Not only the, the, the white, but the, no. I mean, that's more distinct, Yeah. but the dark, the way it flows over there, it's perfect. Wow, man. Look at art, man. I love, the, the, the best part I like, the whole thing, Yeah. this webbing, this cracking. Yeah. And the webs along the here. And you see the webbing, the lines. You can't do that by hand, or even with a stick. You can't do it by hand, but we you did, use the fingers. You can't, these are like little contributors in the Congo. Yeah. Right? That's what it looks like. This, like a satellite view of the Congo with all the little rivers and stuff and the flats. There's your sand and there's your flats. <laughs> you ever seen it twice, eh? No. Yeah, but but now we know how to do. If you wanna if you wanna make these effects with this webbing, like we're talking about, and this fracturing. You had to have a decent amount of fog spray paint. If you had pushed that into the resin, yep. it wouldn't retain that. It, no. so, so now we know this effect. Now we could incorporate that into other colors. There's so and much fog on this, top of the color. You could turn this into reds, oranges. Yes, and exactly. Anything you want. Exactly. But so much fog white, on top of your clear, it allowed you to do this. Yes, exactly. It's the white that allows the reds and the blues yeah. to become rich. Yeah. Now, if, and, and if you didn't have a, something with a good working time, something that was compatible with these spray paints. Think about the mess you'd have on your hands. Totally, totally, totally. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm.